I think I've spent about the last 25 or more years of my life researching and writing about UFOs. And I've got a very interesting series that I want to introduce to you now. Uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, my wife Tracy and I went to the UK for a particular special trip. And that was to produce 52 episodes uh, relating to UFOs. This has been a dream of mine for a long, long while. Uh, what I wanted to do was to tell all of the important historical stories and bits of information about the fascinating UFO subject that I never really got the chance to tell uh, in, in this kind of a format. And so that's what we did. And uh, the result was just an amazing experience of um, working through all kinds of fascinating stories. And I'm happy I'm here with uh, the producer of that series, Steve Mara. Many people in the UFO field certainly know Steve. And uh, Steve, I just want to have you here and thank you for what a great experience that we did have in creating that, that show. <laughs> it was, thank you, Richard. And uh, it was, we had some challenging times, you know, to 52 episodes, you know, unlike most other episodes when they're produced for a, a series, um, you know, it was a matter of uh, just plowing through and getting these, uh, getting the information out, critical information. Uh, and most of all, you know, what, you, what people are going to see is a TV show, which is, which is really very little edited, to be honest with you. What we wanted is to you to do free flow, be able to say what you want to say and express about the, these cases as you wanted to express them without actually cutting big chunks out and throwing them away like a lot of TV shows do. Uh, and we wanted to people would be able to see that. And it's... It, and I have to say, it's it's perfect timing, um, considering the way things have happened over the last 18 months. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of buzz and talk about the UFO phenomenon in your country, especially regarding the uh, the UAP uh, report that was released and uh, the questions that surround it in regarding what else does the US government require to conclude on something or, or, or provide a suitable conclusion on, on this phenomenon. You know, because there was uh, there was mentions that we need further analysis, we might need further funding, new you know new new areas of research, um, and but when we go through this TV series, it demonstrates the the amount they must have already, and that's what's this is why it's it, it balances it out this series for me, and and probably will do for many others, and reminds them. That the UFO phenomena didn't start in 2016 with the referencing of UAPs. Um, it goes back a lot, a lot further than that. Right. And some very critical cases. And what I wanted to do with this series, and I, I feel that we accomplished this. I wanted to um, sit down almost like if someone's at a campfire, and I just wanted to tell UFO stories. Why does this matter? Why does that matter? So I made a point to get into a lot of it, the fascinating history, all of these old stories that everyone's forgotten, like Harry Truman actually received UFO briefings during his presidency? Answer, yes, he did. And it's an amazing story. Not many people know about it. And I, I that was one of them. The uh, bizarre but incredible and true story of remote viewer Ingo Swan and the mysterious Mr. Axelrod. I think that was one of our favorite ones. Yeah. And I mean, for good reason, it's just an insane, crazy story, but it's absolutely fascinating. And I, I just know that people will want to hear that story. Or what is it about UFOs shutting down missiles? Is that true? Did that really happen? Well, yes, it does seem to have happened. And I had things to say about that. And I tried to do more than the history. I tried to get into the uh, just some of them are fascinating encounters. You know, what, what's up with abduction versus other forms of contact? Well, I have thoughts about that and I wanted to share that. Or what's, what's the, the relationship of, of UFOs with maybe something like artificial intelligence? Is, that, is there something there? The answer is yes. I think there's absolutely something there. Um, and a couple of the episodes go even a little bit beyond UFOs because my thinking a lot of times will go beyond UFOs. And I try to look into the future. You know, the world of uh, 5G, maybe 6G interconnectivity and uh, issues like privacy and artificial intelligence, uh, the future of human society. These are interests of mine. And I think, you know, we spent a couple of episodes even talking about some of those issues. So for me, the whole point was to sit down 
and tell a bunch of really interesting stories that have historical significance, but also are just plain interesting. That was always my goal. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. And what's really interesting is that, like you said, the series takes us right up to current day and actually be even beyond, be honest with you, because we uh, have been introduced to 5G. We know about, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and the way humanity and technology is just elevated so fast. Um, it really does take us into the future somewhat as well, which is, yes, yes. Which, is, which is fascinating because the whole subject is, I mean, we know about the UAP phenomenon, the UFO stuff been going on for a long, long time. Mm. Obviously, we do touch on, on areas of that because it's uh, even from the ancient of days right through to, uh, you know, what we might be able to expect within the next. Yeah, yeah we, we got into it all. I, yeah. I think we got into all of those issues uh, really well. And again, I, I wanted to convey my enthusiasm for the UFO subject as well. That's important. Like, this isn't just some dry little history lesson, you know, where you fall asleep in the back of the classroom. Uh, I really wanted people to realize, like, this stuff is fascinating. And let me tell you a story. <laughs> and so I wanted every, uh, every presentation, every, every episode to be exactly that. It's like, you know, you talk to someone who knows about this subject and your question is, why should I care? Why should I care? Well, what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna tell you why you should care or at least why you might find it fascinating and why you might be glad you know about it. Hey, absolutely, especially now in the light of all the, uh, the recent news, even people, you know, you can enter into comfortable conversations about it now and not be the elephant in the room, which is, you know, which has been for such a long time, but because the amount of interest um, and cover by the media the worldwide on this subject, everybody is intrigued, wants to know more. And I think a really good idea that the fact that this series does balance it out, it indicates that, you know, there are some significant cases which have taken place, uh, so many, prior to what the release of this UAP report, which recently came out, um, and it just right. goes to show that this, this is nothing new. It's not yeah. new. The UFO story didn't begin in 2004 with the Nimitz encounter and the Tic Tac UFO. It started way before that. And boy, do we, we do get into it. And people should know, you know, of the 52 episodes that uh, I recorded, uh, 20 are going to be picked up by Gaia TV. And they are going to air that starting October 11th of 2021. So people uh, can... Uh, look that at, look into that. And then the other 32, I guess, episodes are going to be at uh, UAMN TV, this the YouTube channel, uh, also Zohar Entertainment. I think it's the same um, channel, right? And yes. those are going to be, yeah, those are, those are being rolled out starting uh, July 22nd, 2021. That's it, 11 p.m. BST, British summertime. That's, that's here in the UK, where it's very, very hot at the moment. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it, what's intriguing is the fact that, you know, as the, the, you mentioned the first 20, you know, 20 episodes, which Guy are going to be putting out in October, um, they're going to be covering areas such as something like the atomic era and the flying saucer era. Those are the two for me, where everything nearly broke down. Everything just nearly fell apart in the 1950s. You know, and I think that has probably been the nearest point where we would have ever got to some form of disclosure. You, you know, you got a really good point there. Um, and we, you know, I get into this in, in the series, which is that, you know, 1952 is a long time ago. It's almost 70 years now, but people may not realize just how, how tense that summer and into the fall and winter actually were within the national security community relating to flying saucers, as they were calling them back then, UFOs. Uh, it was such, an, such a moment where you have two weekends in a row of these objects being seen en masse over the capital of the United States in Washington, DC. But not just that, there were countless intense military encounters with UFOs. One uh, right outside, you know, in the North Sea uh, between Britain and Europe. Uh, known as Operation Main Brace, with these were NATO naval exercises where, good grief, UFOs were seen during that entire duration of those exercises. We talk about that and, um, you know, just all of that's 1952 culminating 
in uh, one of the most fascinating poignant memos ever written in that we have declassified on UFOs, which was written to the director of the CIA in December of that year, where the scientific director of the CIA is essentially saying, boss, it looks like we're being invaded. He doesn't use that language, but he's saying, we've been tracking objects at high altitudes and at speeds over such sensitive installations that we know they are not attributable to natural objects or known uh, aerial vehicles, like how much more explicit. So all of that came out in 1952. Uh, and we actually have quite a few episodes where we break that down because there's just so much to talk about. But you're absolutely right. That was a, a time where it looked to many insiders that UFO secrecy might just blow at that any moment. It could just, it could just open up. Yeah, very, very tender times. It really was. And I think it's also incredible that we've, we've also got two episodes on the Wilson leak. Uh, not That's one, right. but two, because there's just so much critical information within those reports. Well, I was uh, very much involved in, uh, you know, ex exposing that when it came out. And as I, as I stayed in the, um, in the series, uh, you know, I'd known about that since 2006. I'd known about this for a very long time. And I get into a lot of the detail on that. Uh, there's still at least one individual who I, his identity, I'm not going to give it up. But uh, the fact is that I knew all about that ever so important conversation between Dr. Eric Davis and retired Admiral Thomas R. Wilson, that you know, it's not an official government document, that's true. But look, you're talking about a conversation that was uh, recorded with detailed notes between two very well plugged in high level people in which you know, this retired Admiral who was with the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, where he's telling Dr. D Davis about his failed attempt to get access to a deep black budget program that was designed to reverse engineer alien tech. And he just lays it out there. That, those notes were something that was shown to me back in 06. They leaked in 2019. And when they leaked, I was very actively part of that conversation. And so, yes, I have a lot to say about that. And that's definitely, I think, one of the high points of our series. Yeah, ab absolutely. And there's so many different variations within what we're just, if we're just looking at the first uh, series that will we'll go out on UMM and TV, um, we've got so many different things in here. I even have to make some notes because, you know, the variety of different, you know, from the presidential sightings, I mean, Ronald Reagan's UFO oh, experiences. No, one of the most amazing... Black. Yeah, experiences, not experience, which was interesting because that was something I actually learned as well. People, and, uh, he, people do not know how incredible Ray, Ronald Reagan's UFO sighting in 1974 was. And I, <laughs> at the end, I mentioned a, uh, an account that I got directly from the actress Shirley MacLaine many years ago uh, about, uh, about something even more dramatic that may have happened to Ron and Nancy back in the 50s. Uh, and of course, we, we, we touched on uh, the alien abduction phenomenon, obviously, Escape that, I've, and of course there is also Travis Walton. I mean, Travis Walton's been in the uh, on Facebook uh, a lot of talk about that absolutely ridiculous stuff that's coming out about it at the moment. And I think it's just another effort to just dampen the the story after so many years since 1975. Sure. You know, we we all know Travis. We've all been there, and we know that the evidence stands alone. You know, it does from even the the latest investigation on the location of where those incidents actually happened. Um, absolutely. So we are, we, of course, we deal with Jimmy Carter's UFO sightings as well. We deal with whistleblowers, you know, uh, U.S. naval uh, incidents. And, of course, they're still going on up today, you know, as yeah. we as we know. Um, and even finishing off with uh, strange alien visits to schools. As you, an alien was shot on the tarmac of a, of a military base. You just don't hear those words, do you, really? No. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's... Incredible story. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's, what's about these, about unique stories about people remembering these incidents. You know, we don't want to get lost in the in the paperwork of all the UAP stuff at the moment. Uh, I think it's really interesting that these things are cherished, are looked after, are remembered. And it's all part of the of the history of ufology. And that's it why sure that's why we of course when we were going to go with the, the chronological history of ufology, such a long word, we decided to call it you know Richard Dole's UFO Chronicles, which is exactly what it is. That, that was the best time. You guys came up with that. I, I didn't come up with that title, but I thought that's actually the best way to describe it, UFO Chronicles. Um, because it's, it's not really a chronology. There's a lot of history in there, that's for sure. But it's really, it's the story of UFOs 
uh, told by me, uh, honestly, and just in the best way that I, I knew how to do. I mean, I think what we did here, honestly, Steve, was always a dream of mine. This exact project was something that I, I had always uh, like had this fantasy, like, can I ever do a series that where I'm sitting in front of a camera talking about UFOs in this way? I mean, I've done countless interviews and documentaries and, you know, some of them uh, gave a lot of information, but what, I, what I've always wanted to do is to give a, a, a complete story of the UFO subject from my point of view uh, <clears throat> in a way that it, it's, not, it's not the same as following the entire history of UFOs through 52 episodes, not quite like that. What it is is, is me diving into different aspects of the UFO subject including the history and including science and much more, and, and simply giving the most fleshed out version of this in a, the most interesting way that I knew how to do. So well, it's basically me just telling a bunch of really interesting UFO stories. <laughs> well, I think our, the viewers are going to be absolutely thrilled to, uh, to see them. It is quite unique. I don't think it's ever really been done in this manner. Certainly, uh, like you said, it's like sat around the campfire listening to these incidents. The series also is going to feature two bonus episodes with Tracy galbert Dolan. Um, covering the aspects of remote viewing, which I actually found absolutely fascinating. Uh, Tracy's, I mean, just Tracy's experience herself at doing this was a, was a, was a really an, an open mouth situation. I was like, what? How did she? Absolutely. Mean? Yeah, Tracy, you know, p- people who have not heard her talk about remote viewing, you don't know what you're missing. Tracy has an ability to describe the remote viewing process, honestly, better than anyone I've ever heard. Uh, as a remote viewer, she's she has this gift of being able to communicate how that actually works. It's not like turning on a TV and seeing on the screen. And she explains all that. It's like, it doesn't work like that. But it's a real process. It really works. And, uh, and so when you hear her describe it, it's, it's a real eye opener. Um, you know, she wasn't sure about how many uh, how much she really would be able to say on camera. And all of us knew, it's like, uh, don't even worry about this. Like once you start talking, you know it's going to be good. And that's exactly what it was. Like her two episodes on that are just stellar, in my opinion. I have a feeling people who watch it are going to agree totally. I also found it very interesting all about the research behind it, the military application, oh, yeah. how that could work. Um, and that's what really makes it fascinating uh, and an ability that we may all have. And of course, Tracy actually kind of gives a little bit of, it seems like she's giving some sort of teaching as well at the same time about how to go about that. I think totally, yes, she does do that. Uh, she's very sophisticated with that. She knows it really well. And uh, I think when people hear her exact specific remote viewing stories, they're just going to have that, oh my yeah. God moment. Like, I can't believe it, but it's true. Like some yeah, of the remote views she did are just astonishing. Thanks to everyone for watching this. I want to thank Steve Mara for producing this series, which I'm so happy and proud to be part of and the amazing team behind it. A uh, lot, of, lot of folks who did just so much really good work behind the scenes to make this happen. And now stick around for a couple of clips of the series to give you an idea of what we actually have in store for you. My name's Steve Miller. I'm an executive producer of UFO Chronicles, a YouTube series featuring and hosted by Richard Dolan. Starting in the year 1967, this season is absolutely jam-packed with some of the strangest reported incidents covering such subjects as UAPs seemingly shutting down missiles, President Ronald Reagan's UFO encounter, the world's abduction experience, 
the US government's remote viewing of UFOs, the incredible Iranian UFO encounter with original pilot recordings, the early investigations into UFO crashes, and the shooting of an alien on the tarmac of a military base, a strange encounter with a being on board the USS Saratoga, a startling alien encounter with school children, and why UFOs matter to you. Most people who study UFOs have probably heard something about the really amazing incident back in 1967 in which some large glowing red object appears to have been uh, involved in the disabling of at least 10, maybe more, nuclear warheads over at Malmstrom Air Force Base in the state of Montana. I'll get to that in a minute. But one thing I just want to point out is that there are occasional uh, stories about UFOs engaging with nuclear missiles and weapons and at times doing damage to them or disabling them in one way or another. I do think that this is a pretty common theme and probably true, but I would just point out, but just to put this in perspective, there's actually a lot of incidents where there is no UFO activity in connection to nuclear tests and the like. I mean, after all, from 1945 to the end of the 20th century, there were over 2,000 detonations of nuclear weapons during tests all over planet Earth. One of the craziest, most fascinating stories in all of UFO history is probably that of Mr. Axelrod. Like, who was this guy? The story comes from Ingo Swan, and I have to say I was lucky to meet Ingo Swan, spend some time with him many years ago to talk about this. Uh, he had the chance to write about it in one of his books, which I strongly recommend. But Ingo Swan is the father of modern remote viewing. He himself coined the phrase remote viewing back in the 1970s when scientists like Hal Puthoff and Russell Targ were developing protocols initially for the CIA and then later for the military to work with what they called psychic spies, remote viewers. Uh, you know, people who psychically would be able to tell them what are the Russians doing here and where's that submarine there and what are the insides of this embassy over here, and so forth. And that's what they were doing, and Ingo was one of the top remote viewers that they had. Uh, a very interesting guy, I have to say. I really enjoyed my opportunity to meet him. But his story of Mr. Axelrod, now, even now, like, you gotta wonder, what was this all about? So, here we go. Certainly lots of strange stories when you go through the whole history of UFOs. Here's one, and I happen to think this one's true. The shooting of an alien being. Yeah, I think that happened. This is on January 18th, 1978, long time ago, in the state of New Jersey. Now, Fort Dix is an army base there, and it's right up next to an Air Force base uh, called McGuire Air Force Base. So they join with each other. And it does appear that something very dramatic happened on both of those bases at around three in the morning on the early morning of January 18th, 1978. So it's winter time. And here's what happened. Uh, there was an Air Force sergeant over at McGuire. Uh, he, we only know him under the pseudonym Jeffrey Morse. Now I just want to say this man was actually over time interviewed by at least five very seasoned investigators, uh, all of whom found him highly credible, like really super credible. A lot of those investigators themselves were former military people. Apparently this was something that really impressed them. So let me talk about Morse's testimony first. We also have other testimony as well. True, it's very likely that other civilizations have already reached their version of the singularity, their version of very strong AI, probably. But is it true that all versions of strong AI are the same? Might it not be true that each version of strong AI is a representation, as it were, of the intelligence that created it? Possibility. I think it is a possibility. I think the AI that we create is very possibly a unique form of AI that other civilizations may not have had. And what are some very distinctive things about the human mind. Well, one thing is that we are intensely curious. 
and we are intensely active and assertive, you might even say aggressive. It's funny that a subject that's considered so non-scientific, that is UFOs or UAP, is actually a subject that touches on so many leading edge scientific concepts. Like it's this great irony that the, the topic that is completely pushed aside as unscientific, as not worthy of serious or scientific minds is actually, when you really dive into it, uh, a subject that promises to take us into the next stage of leading edge science for an entire array of disciplines. Go figure. Sometimes people wonder, why is a UFO cover-up even a big deal? I can go on with my life. It's, I have a good life. I don't need to worry about any of that stuff. It doesn't affect me. Well, it affects you at least in one way, which is that it's probably an expensive thing to pay for. I think that UFO secrecy probably takes a significant cost out of our society that we're not really fully aware of because this never gets reported. But it's a significant part of our world. But I think there's even much more of the cost of secrecy than even money. You know, let me talk about some of this. So people often ask if remote viewing is real. And I think we know from its origins with Stanford and with the military and the intelligence agencies that have been funding this for 20 plus years that yes, it is and was a very real thing. But now it's in our hands and what are we gonna do with it? And what is it really about? And remote viewing in its essence is really about deepening a sense of self-awareness with ourselves, getting to know ourselves better I mean, some people think it's scary because they think, do I have to deal with the God concept or what people call guides? Or, but I think really we pull it back a step from there. And this is a part of our subconscious mind. And I think on top of that, it really is building an efficacy when you go through and you do a series of remote views, like a discipline, you are building confidence and reacquainting and trusting this deeper part of yourself that we have for so long have been told and taught to reject for logic. Some might think that remote viewing is something special and magical, but I'm here to tell you it's actually not. It's something very natural, very innate, and something that we can all learn to do. The accuracy of remote viewing can be staggering. Quite clearly, this ability to not only traverse vast distances with the mind, but also to transcend space and time, was considered of great interest to the US military, which sought to incorporate such abilities with psychic spying. Now in the year 2021, we hear very little of remote viewing military programs. However, I think we'd be foolish to think that such programs haven't continued in secret.